Hey y'all, this is the legendary Sonny G, Sonny with an O, not a U. And this is your boy Sterling Moody. And we are F a Podcast. F a Podcast. And thank you for listening to us. So make sure you tune in to F a Podcast, a real N-word podcast where we talk about real N-word stuff. That's it. So make sure y'all tune in. F a Podcast. F a Podcast. Welcome to another informational, educational, or my my new favorite word, ignorant. Describe, please. So ignorant is when something is intelligent, but yet have you ever listened to somebody and they just seem like that? Gucci Man's ignorant. Yes, there we go. That's what Gucci I was about Mane to say. Gucci Man is ignorant because if you listen to a Gucci song three times in a row. The first two times you listen to it, you just gonna be jamming. You just gonna be, oh yeah, he, you know what I'm saying? He got hoes and he 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 sells drugs and he. And, but you listen to it that third time, and and Gucci's gonna sneak something really brilliant by you. Right. People are like, go ahead and pay your taxes, then get your receipts. Like what? 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 Hold on, Did, Gucci. Before this, you just. You just kicked the chick out wait, the car out of, out of a moving vehicle. What? You just offered me drugs on his own. <laughs> Sign your 1040A to get your tax returns. What? Gu- Gucci, I... But, you know, you know that's, that's, that's funny because, Bert. like, you, like you, you have a really good outlet to give good information, and you don't use it for that because you, you're afraid of not keeping your lifestyle. That's what I'm saying. Oh, Gucci does not have... Uh, so, like I, so Gucci will say, say it's a 10-song 10, 10 album. Gucci will rap nine songs about selling drugs, pimping women, yep. fast cars, money, and then that tenth song is like a complete, complete instructions for how to build a sonic super collider. Yep, f- featuring Young Thug. You're like, how did this even come about? Which one? And which one of you all researched building? Who has a, a degree in physics right now? That's right. What I want to know. Gucci apparently. Who's listening to um, a little John? Little John is one of them. Little John is ignorant. Yeah. Yes, Little John is just completely um, ignorant. Who was we? We heard a I heard a song of his. I guess this is one of his more recent ones. And mm-hmm. it was just like you know, throw that ass and bitches and shit. You know, all this kind of crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wait a minute, I've heard this man speak. I know where he comes from. Oh yeah. Are you really trying to do this to your community? Like, come on, man. Like you, you have a good outlet. Use it. That's why we use Talk and Break the way we do. Plies is another <laughs> one like that. Like, if you just, if you listen to Plies' music and you follow him on Instagram. If on you Instagram, follow Instagram, man, he, he, like, like he's saying something very important to you, to your face right now. But you can't get past this, this big-ass grill in his mouth. Right. And how, how ignorant he sounds. He's not saying anything ignorant. He just sounds he just sa- super so ignorant. So it's just like, I don't know if he's saying something important, if I should laugh, if he's, is he giving me some kind of... You know, and he looking at he looking at you know he looked the same all the time, same hat, you know, same um, just a regular blank t shirt, a lot of jewelry. You know, I, I'm gonna say this, and it's kind of controversial. Cardi B's ignorant. Very. People, because people are sleeping on how intelligent she really is. She, eh, so just take a couple weeks ago when who was it? Jermaine Dupri said something about. All women rap about is uh, shaking their ass and this, that, and the third. First off, that didn't stop. That didn't start with Cardi B or the City Girls. He made a song uh, about it too. Like, you know, Trina, uh, Kia, Kaya, which yeah. however you say, you know, um, Gangsta Boo and La Chat, like that. Yeah. There's, you know, women in the '90s that was they whole jam. Lil Kim, what Foxy that? Brown, like that was they whole thing was sounding, you know, like like prostitutes. With Mike skills, yeah, I'll, I'll say Lil, Lil Kim and Foxy Brown kind of changed the form, but you know he was around, you know, the Brat and uh, all those other hard female rappers. Yeah, he he thought just because the Brat wore uh, Jabot shorts, right? That, that you know, it, it, she and a jersey with a sports bra, yeah, with her hair braided, you know. But so when he said that, and Cardi B came back and she listed like the female rappers who. Were, are underground and not really getting any shine, but she's like, if y'all since y'all like lyrics so much, why don't y'all check out uh, Rhapsody right. and 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 Tierra Whack and and all? And it was like, mm-hmm. yo, like, but the, but you can't out there, right? You can't you can't argue with that. Like right. she's telling you some dope rappers to listen to who aren't 
sounding like she just happened Hope. to be a stripper who made it out. That's it. And you and then let's talk about how hard that is. Everybody is Once not you making in, it you out in. of stripping. Yeah, stripping is something that that like you start off as a Waffle House waitress, right? And then you go to an amateur night one time. Next thing you know, one of the girls who are veterinaries like, hey, you, you can do this. You can do you this. Can you do got this. the body for it. You know, you just got to get these and that done. Well, you just told me, never mind, whatever. And then next thing you know, you got tattoos in places where you can't go to Chuck E. Cheese no more because now you, you got you, can't, you cannot go back to your job at Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> with, with those tattoos. No, you can't go into a Chuck E. Cheese with those tattoos. Yeah. Because we was at Dave & Buster's and the lady was standing next to me. And I was like, anywhere where you can put a garter belt where there can be money placed in that area, you're a stripper. So that's why you put the tattoo there, so they can insinuate to go to that area. You know, it's marketing. You know, tricking the mind. You know, but then you that, get caught. You that get caught is genius. In it. You get caught. That's ignorant religion. Even the 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 the, the why, why you think structure why, of there, stripping is ignorant There is, is no purpose for a thigh tattoo at all. Not at all, except for I have a garter belt around my thigh and I have a really nice tattoo right there, and you're looking at it because you're too drunk to realize that it says "put money here." That's huh. literally what it says. If you look at it. But you're too drunk to realize that. That is that is purely ignorant. <laughs> and next thing you know, you didn't put a you didn't put a whole hundred dollar bill. thinking it was it was a it was a one dollar. Oh yeah, no, you, you thought that get, was a single. Can I get it back? Can I, nope. Ooh. Can I at least get change for it? <laughs> you know, can I? I got to do laundry tomorrow. I can't just not have. She wasn't she wasn't drugging dudes with with drugs. I mean, she probably said that, but you know, she was using you know you know alcohol as a drug. You know, even if she was drugging dudes, <laughs> first off, let's talk about the fact <laughs> that somehow. Somehow, when that came out, everybody got mad at Cardi. Like, first off, I, I'm 35 years old. I've, I've. That's right. a simp move right there. If you get, if you go out with a stripper, you have to prepare for some, some, some mind, some, some mind raping, some bullshit. You know, she might slip something in your drink. She might have set you up and had somebody, you know, waiting for you she somewhere. She's gonna always laugh at your jokes. Yeah, there's. Or she gonna just get become hard for no reason. You know, like why not? Like people get mad, people get, the table. people get mad at sex workers, and you don't realize, like, hey, this person that is actually paying for it right. is probably the person we need to be yeah. directing that energy towards. And then when you, and then when you try to like try to like you know date a woman, you're gonna spend the same amount of money. This is gonna cut out all the bullshit. Oh yeah, but then you. Know. But you know what? That's like that's like so because I agree. You know, they they say that you know no matter what, whether you're dating, you're right. married, or whatever, you're paying for a woman. But it's kind of like the difference between having a full-time job and being a contractor. Yep. You know, like regardless of the fact that you're getting paid, one comes with 401k. Still got to pay taxes. That's true. Still got to pay taxes. That's true. She still has the potential to get pregnant. That is also true. So either way, whether you out here courting this girl or not, and y'all and y'all decide to make that this the, the third date this special night, or you do it on the first night with the stripper. Next thing you know, either way, you still have potential to be paying that child support. That is true. So, which one do you want to cut out? Neither one of them, because it doesn't really matter. It doesn't. So, do you want to either work for this company or work with this company, which is also still for this company? But, yeah, so so Cardi B admitted to, to drugging the guy, and everybody got mad at Cardi B. And I'm like, back in my day, we got mad at the, the John. Mm-hmm. He's a John. Like, he got set Nobody empathizes with a John when they get set up. Right. If I leave right now, go to Strokers, leave Strokers with a chick, and then tomorrow I come and tell y'all I, my car and everything is gone, nobody's going to be like, oh, my God, we have to find that stripper from Strokers. They're going to be like, you dumbass. You deserve that. Yeah. You got set up, stupid. You knew it was going to happen. But we got she, mad at Cardi B for saying this, for admitting that she did it. Like That that's, woke movement, man. Like That's not part everybody's, of the game. Everybody's too woke. You know, you know how when you haven't had any sleep? That's what woke is to me. It's just delusional people. You don't even know what you're mad about. You know how when you haven't had sleep since when you got home from work and you just up, your eyes are just bugging. That's what woke is. I can I can believe that because sometimes some folks wokeness just. I don't understand how we have smartphones and Google and then people still expect you to just go along with anything they tell you. Right. Like it's not in a book, it's not online, it's not in. Super woke folks get on my nerves because they will say some stuff and then be mad that you don't believe I it. I can't even have a picnic no more. You know what picnic means? Look, picnic. man. Whatever they did, <laughs> that had nothing to do with me eating a sandwich in the park. <laughs> I mean, that's it. Nah, the ones that kill me is the super, you know a black man invented oxygen, right? Man, come on. What? Yeah, before black, before the black man came along. Shut your breathing ass up. <laughs> folks was just being born, breathing once, and dying. And then he came along and invented oxygen. Been invented breathing, too. Yep. 
Nobody was breathing. First one, first one to breathe was, was was a black man. Did you know that? Yeah. Did Did you know that <laughs> the first the first time somebody took a shit, it was a black man. Right. But they spelled uh, don't be the first. Right. Don't, don't be, the, be first. the first. Don't be the first one to do something. That and it, that's my argument when I argue with racists, which is a pastime of mine. I absolutely love trolling. It is, it is pretty fun. I love trolling racists. Yeah. Because they're so easy to, to get riled up. They think they're going to get you riled up. Right. But if you know what you're doing, you can just flip it on them. But that is my favorite thing to, to rile them up with is like, um, what did you just say? Which the, one? You had just said, um, you just said something. And the picnic? <laughs> it's always in my head. I don't know why. You just, somebody really ruined picnics for you, they? Didn't did. They? they did. It was a, I'm like, hey, we should just go on a picnic. You know what that means? You know what, girl? I didn't want you no way. It's cool. Whatever. What we saying? And then I was talking about the guy who invented oxygen, or the first book. First no, we, one to breathe. Yeah, yeah. Then, then we said, <laughs> Dave Chappelle said, uh, uh, don't be the first. Mm-hmm. My argument for them is always, they're still first black. Right. That's crazy. Like, like, you can't say that we're in the age of post-racism and first black is still a thing. Right. The first black person to do something is still out there for a lot of categories. Right. Like it's not like racism just ended and it was like, okay, well we've let black people do everything. No, there's still a, a checkbox on something right. that y'all have not let black folks do yet. Right. You know, it's, it's always funny. Uh, you know, um, uh, my co-host Kenneth, he grew up in um, uh, the hood part of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Like he, me, I grew up in a nice, you know, white part of town and everywhere I've lived. Mm-hmm. So I, I, we, we and him have. The opposite of stories. When people meet us, they go, you know, they talk to me and go, "Oh yeah, Rod, you down? You didn't come in for the dab? I'm, I'm in for a handshake. Hold on, man. Wait a minute. I'm the white guy. You see when you want to talk to like that. So um, I always. And go, to be fair, <laughs> Kenneth, Kenneth is uh, Kenneth so black. He's so hood, man. His dap is super crisp to be a <laughs> white. Is it not? He got mad at my son. Oh my god. He was like, Rod, what are you doing? I said, Hey, look, man. I only see him two weeks out of the out of the month. You know what I'm saying? So That's enough time to teach him that. <laughs> look, if you don't do anything else as a father, as a black father, you have to teach him look, that. If he can't get it, man, I can't. I can't do it. It's, it you know, y'all, man. You know, if somebody come in for you. You got. You better. You better be ready. Like, don't 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 mess this up. You know, you, that's on your mama. You know? <laughs> Kenneth looks like that. Blo- that that substitute, the white substitute that always right. teaches the worst class. In in uh, all black school, oh, all black school, and so he takes the kid, like he takes the troublemaking kid to the side and tries to relate to him. Hey, buddy, I know what you're going through. I've been there. <laughs> let me get the skin. Let me let me guess. Dad not around. Mom working two jobs. Grandma makes grits without butter or <laughs> sugar in them. Butter I've been sugar. I've been there. Believe me. And you're like, who is this white dude talking to? We just lost our audience talking about some sugar in, in your grits. Oh no no that's not me. That's not that's not me at all. I don't even get into those kind of debates. The the sugar the sugar and salt and grits debates. Oh man. You gonna get stabbed. People are nasty to they me. Will, they will catch you. People people be having debates about let's talk about this. If people want to talk about putting sugar or salt and butter in your grits, let's talk about people who pour milk first and then pour the cereal in. You told that yesterday. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what we a, need to be concerned it was, about. It was kind of insulting guys, cause I, but you know what? If if I can be on the other side of, of this debate, I didn't say I'd do it. <laughs> but as OJ said, if I did do it, the way it would work is I pour just enough so I don't have to keep double pouring the milk. I can pour put enough cereal on top, eat that cereal, pour more cereal. It's a double pour of cereal and not double pour of milk. If I was to do that, but I'm not a savage. You know, I don't just open up my pack of Pop Tarts and just bite it. I take it out, break it in half, eat it from the middle. I seen somebody eat a banana from the middle one time. <laughs> And I wanted to call the police immediately. Right. I, I was like, Were what you were the, you the were you the black dude calling the police meme or the white lady calling? I was the white lady. Yeah. I was completely the white lady. I was I, I was the, my yeah like you know his is kind of like trying to hide yeah. behind something. But that mine that big ass phone. Yeah, <laughs> hers is like yeah I'm looking at you. Yeah, I'm calling them right now. Right They're now. on the phone right now with me. That was totally me. I'm like, officer, he, yeah, he's eating a banana from, from the, the middle. middle right now. That's what uh, Liam Neeson did in uh, the movie Widows. He took a Pop-Tart out, unwrapped it, and bit it. Just bit it like a, like a chocolate bar. We don't do that, sir. Not no, in this country. No toaster, no nothing. You know, no, well, it's not even a toaster, but you at least take one out, and you crack it in half. Right. You crack it and crack it in half. Yeah, you don't, you don't just bite it like a candy bar. No, because you're getting all bread or whatever the hell that is around there. I don't think it's bread. 
Mm. All dough. Dough. Yeah. Yeah. It's not cooked in any way, shape, or form. Topic. I, I'm still thinking about the pop tart now. Now I'm like, <laughs> I'm I'm like, wow, that's. For all you uh, non-traditional people out there, we do things one way here in America. You understand? Cereal first, then your milk, and then bananas. Apparently, you're supposed to peel them the other way. Apparently, pineapples are supposed to be peeled out from the little thing. You're supposed to take the top off and it just comes right out. I don't know, man. I'm I'm starting to it's starting to lose me here. I, you know what? Life hacks. Life hacks. I get stuck on those things. And I watch them, and I try to save them, so I can say, "Oh, I should do that next time." Can't remember. I just keep doing the things the hard way all the time. But I, I watched one. And I was like, we're, oh. "We're conditioned and trained to do them these ways too." That's that's. Yeah. It, it's not even the most convenient way to do stuff. Yeah. But we've been trained. That's like, so, you know how, recently they've shown you that with a can opener you can actually open the top of the can. Right. I promise you, I was. Still can't do it. I was 33 years old before I knew that that. Uh, you put it the other way, and then you, no, you do it you, so that the the opening right. is around the top. Not. I still can't do it. Like no matter. Like I watched the video and literally put it on there, and I put the phone down, and I started to do it the other way. So now that I've learned that way, I can't do it the other way. Like, I feel like people are peasants. If you if you bring me a can. That's been cut, cut the, way, the other way. Yeah, you're a peasant, and you won't cut your finger if you do it the the the, 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 the other way. The way that it, but people for the longest time did not know that you could do cans that way. That you that's could cause, open. That's because one 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 famous person did it this way. And and the other person. Now everybody knows to do it. Just, a friend of mine, she broke her thumb, and she was trying to eat a banana. With since we're talking about bananas, and she's like, "Oh, I can't peel it because of my thumb," and. One of our coworkers said, "Why don't you just squeeze the bottom like monkeys do?" Wait, what? But it worked. That's how the banana the, the banana opened itself because she you would never think of that though. She would have went the whole day probably right. without eating that banana had our coworker not said that. And it's funny, like I said, because the the banana is actually designed to be eaten the other direction. Yeah, it's not supposed to tear it from, from the, the top from, or from the bottom. From actually, the bottom, yeah, we've been ripping off the the wrong end of it. This whole time, it's almost like when you have a box of cereal and you open the wrong side, and you can tell you open the wrong side instantly, and you're just mad. Your whole day is ruined because you can't go back. Yeah, you know, ain't no going back to that. You can't, you know, in a, in a little clip to be able to flap it over. Nope, just you because you know, you you know what each side right. of the bag looks like. So even if you flip the box, the bag still looks like you opened the bottom. I'm not gonna lie, life hacks make me mad, like 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 angry white dad mad. When you find out that something so simple can, right. can come from something that you right. never knew before. I mean, I, I, I don't want to do anything the rest of the day. I don't want to touch nothing. Because if I, I feel like if I touch it, I'm just doing it wrong. Like, everything has a life hack for it, and that's not fair. That's that's the United States, man. We have we've we get trained and programmed on stuff, right. and then somebody comes along and goes, hey, you know there's a different way to do that. And we're like, you're a liar. You're and, a liar. And then you see it. And you're like, wait, Then you watch what? a video on it, and you go, this is edited. No, this is, it's got to be edited. This is fake. Then you, you go through all the, le- all the different stages and levels. You start crying at one point. It's, it's you can call your grandma. And, you know, she don't want to believe you because she, you know. She's been doing it for 70, then, 80 years she gonna, the and wrong then, way. And then when you tell her she's been doing it the wrong way, she gonna, it's going like, to be like you just told her somebody died. Really? Oh, Lord, Jesus. No, no, Lord. Don't tell me they did that to me. Uh, no. My, my grandma argued to death. You could show her evidence. Evidence. You could show her cold, hard evidence, and she will still. Right. Or she'll call you the devil. You can show that generation that, that someone did not walk on the moon and show them how it did not happen, and they will not believe you because this is what they were trained to believe. Hmm. That's that's terrible. I, I was just thinking about Get the last back. time I was in a, a a conversation with somebody about, first off, I don't know. I'm not going to pretend I know. I don't know. At both sides make sense. Both the conspiracy side that says, oh, well, if he was on the moon, then why is there shadows? and this, That makes sense to me. Then the pro side, who you know, they make sense too. So I don't take a side on that, but right. it's just a funny argument to me that people actually argue if we've been to the moon or not. Yeah. That's that's but that's ignorant. Have, have either one of y'all been there? No. Right. Then shut up. But everybody's gathered evidence from this perspective and that perspective of why it either we did or we didn't. That, right. And that's ignorant. You like the ignorant part of that is that nobody has a, a astro physics degree right but yet 
they all want to seem intelligent about space travel. About something. Yeah. Right. So I don't I don't I don't have any experience in space travel, but I want you to know that I am very knowledgeable in knowing how rather or not somebody went to the moon or not. I don't know, man. I guess I guess uh, you know me and you have never been able to have like a an argument of conversation because I'm I'm so open minded to things. I, I want to hear what someone has to say. Like I'm not going to be so closed off to say no, man. This is the only way that, that that we can do stuff. Being deployed really showed me like okay, wait a minute, you know. We're not the only ones that do stuff differently here. Um, when I was when I was over, you know, over there, you see where Russian soldiers grow out their beards mm -hmm. and look like the natives, mm -hmm. and you would never know the difference. But they train you to think that this is what the a Middle Eastern person looks like. Mm -hmm. So when you see one in a, in a movie and they don't have a head wrap on and the long beard and all this other extra stuff, you're trained to think that this is what it is. And you know, when you know us, me and you, as our parents. We try to, you know, to let, let our kids, you know, learn things on on their own. Mm -hmm. But then there's things that, that we know that we have to be, you know, conscious of. And say, you know what, this is what my parent made me do when I was younger because they were made to do it, do it when they were younger. Now there's a, a chance where they have a choice to say, okay, let's break the cycle and forget these life hacks because now they're mad again. Because I thought about them instantly. You know, life hacks are ignorant religions too. I'm gonna walk out of the studio. Like, <laughs> just leave. Because life hacks, so the ignorant part of life hacks is that we didn't know. Right. You know, the general public is ignorant to how simple this little, somebody could be like, you know, you can get stains out by rubbing a banana peel over the stain. You'd be like, no, you can't. That's stupid. Then you see a video. Right. You'd be like, you put it on Facebook, you know. So now everybody's rubbing <laughs> banana peels on themselves trying to get stains out. Because of you, a life hack. And you're over here thinking, I just went to the store and bought this this jug of game that didn't have a coupon for it. When they said I had a coupon, but the coupon didn't work. I put it on there with a little pen. It didn't get the stain out. I got to buy a new shirt. I just spent like $85 when I could have went and got some damn bananas. And my whole day would just be good. That's like in, in, in uh, well... In black families where baking soda cures everything. Oh yeah. You can use baking soda for, you can use baking soda for stains, mm -hmm. for toothpaste if you don't have any toothpaste. And it ain't never make the refrigerator more fresher. I Ever. Know, but I don't know what she's never. talking about. Like my mom used to always have that box in there. I used to look I think she's got one right now. I used to look in there and be like nah, And faithfully change nah. it. I'm faithfully like, change it every three months, even though it never I'm made like, a difference. Everything to the smell. in here tastes like refrigerator. I can taste everything in refrigerator here. Refrigerator has its same, own taste. Like yeah. I think we we had some um some French fries and you know we we don't we don't close them off. It tastes like everything in the freezer. I'm like I can taste everything you have in here. I know we have some some more some more uh, sausages left because I can taste them in these French fries. Like, but just like those kind of things of like that's what they were they were told. It was told that this is what it does. Yeah. But they don't they're not they're not given the chance to do their own, their, their own research. And when someone does do research, then you get a company who puts money into this stuff to say, this is what I want y'all to do. I want y'all to, you know, to, to buy this product and use it like this because it's the only way. When, it, when I found out that the toilet wasn't supposed to be used the way, the, the, the way it is, mm -hmm. you're supposed to be able to write on the back of the toilet. So we're supposed to be sitting the opposite sitting way. Sitting the other way because it was supposed to be like a desk also so you don't have to stop working. Uh -huh. But because we it, it messes with your posture. Because now when you sit there, you get your phone or whatever, and you, and you slink you sneak down. Over. And yeah. I'm like, man, and now, but now you can't do that because somebody going to walk in on you. <laughs> They're going to they gonna be like, what you doing, weirdo? I, I, was, I was just, okay, never mind. Let me, let me just. just the thought of it is was weirding me out right now. Like, like me like, sitting backwards on like, my toilet. And it probably, it, it's probably better for posture. Like, it's probably more right. productive. It's probably, there's probably so many advantages to doing it, but I just can't. And then, like, and like, think about it. You walk into like, in like the restroom, and then you see like somebody's feet going the opposite way. You're gonna be like, "They're doing some nasty shit." I'm getting out. <laughs> but it's only, it's only uh, two. It's only one set of feet. That's well, th you can't see the other ones. Oh, well, yeah, that's that's extremely nasty. Yeah. So, especially anywhere in, in Atlanta, don't go to any bar in Atlanta. So, some of these li life hacks, like I learned that if you have a guitar string, you can use a guitar string to cut cheese. If you don't have a, a, a cheese I'm about to walk out. Bye, y'all. I'm about to go. F this podcast. I mean, <laughs> I didn't. First off, who just has guitar string laying around? Like, who just has 
that's that's a that's a life hack that white people strictly was just like, yeah, we've all got guitar strings. We all have the same things. Yeah. You just that's a, that's oh, like man. fixing phones. Whoever discovered that you can open your phone with a guitar pick, you know what I'm saying? That was somebody who. Um, if you put the uh, the the uh, the dustpan in the sink, you can the water will stream over and go into the bucket. So if you're trying to fill up a bucket and you mm -hmm. can't get it under your sink. You just put the the um, the um, the dustpan, mm -hmm. a, a brand new one. Don't put a dirty one. But you put a dustpan under. You prop it, turn the water on. It'll flow right over into a bucket. I was like, who the hell? Like they like, and it, and it's always a it's always like a strange Facebook ad. It's two o'clock in the morning. I'm scrolling through, and it's like DIY life hack situation ad. And I'm like, okay, I'll look at these. I start watching them. It's like the first three instantly make me mad. Like, this is ridiculous. Who who came up with these things? I like how Facebook ads have taken the place of infomercials. Right. Like, you used to have to stay up till 3 in the morning. Hey, uh, Chuck Norris still got his own, man, religiously. Same one, the Bowflex Power Pro or Kickman or whatever the hell it's called. I don't know what it's called now. It's something. The home, control. oh, the total home gym, total the total home, home gym. I, I, I had to think. I was like, because I used to watch these. I was like, you know, I was a Chuck Norris fan in the '90s. Anything Chuck Norris did, that's I, a life hack within itself. He, he's like, look, why well, go out and buy all of this? We can just do everything on this one machine. Mind what? you, nobody's ever seen. No, no, no one's I ever admired seen, you got, Chuck you got Norris. One? No, no one's, no one's ever admired yeah, Chuck Norris for Anybody being strong. Yeah. At no point. Have you looked at Chuck Norris in a movie and been like, man, he is cut. You just like that he kicks, punches, oh and all God. that crap. Nobody ever thinks to and themselves. Then, and then that's all editing, too. So, right. you know, there ain't nobody except for Jet Li out here, you know. Was, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people out there who do their own stunts. But at the same time, if you are, if you are a movie star, you're not about to be doing, letting nobody kick at your face. Right. That's all you have. You're going to end up looking like Seal out here. You ain't got time for that, you know. So you 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 gonna have as many stunt people as you can who make their who make their 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 whole lives being a stunt person. Right. But do they have a total home gym? No. I don't know. No, I guarantee they don't. I would be a spokesperson for one now. Matter of fact, Chuck, if you follow Chuck Norris on Instagram, he goes to an actual gym. A total home gym? No, he goes to an actual a total gym gym. Have you ever done um, uh, CrossFit? It's, it's it's exhausting driving First by off, the place. When I when I why is there a big ass tire outside? When like, I left the <laughs> got time for this. When I left the military, I decided <laughs> my body can do whatever it wants. Right. I am no longer telling my body how it needs to be or what standards to keep on it. My body just does what it. So now I've got dad bod. I'm fine with that. Right. Fine with that. I don't. Who am I trying to impress? I know you know what I don't have a total home gym. A total home gym. You no. know what? You can get one for three payments of forty nine ninety nine. Not doing it. You know, I'm still. If you're mad. calling now, I'll throw in a whole another total home gym. I don't even know why. I'm you, still you mad. Can't give them away. The when I was a teenager, I thought having a George Foreman grill was the greatest thing in history. Come to find out, it's just a, a panini press. I'm not gonna lie, man. I think it's, it's trash. Just a panini. I press. think it's super trash. It's just a panini. They press. They can't even press the trash. You put trash. In the George Foreman grill, and and you know what, that man, that man, he used his whatever he had left of his his his, his box of money. Oh yeah, he licensed the hell out of his name. Yeah, it's called the George Foreman <laughs> grill. Mind you, it's supposed to be the what is it, the lean, mean, fat grilling machine. That's the actual technical name for it. Now nah, everybody in the hood, the George Foreman, George Foreman, the George <laughs> Foreman the grill. punch grill, <laughs> the grill that punch back. Man, what was his life hacks, and how to make you mad? It, it ain't one of them, I'll tell you that. It, it, the George Foreman grill is not a life hack. You know what? If you've been in the military, well, technically, if you've been in the military or in prison, you know all the life hacks. Like putting putting a grilled cheese sandwich on top of the light yep. so that it could. <laughs> that's a life hack. But you only know that if you've been in the military yep. or prison. You can cook Hot Pockets in uh, Georgia heat. I'm telling yeah. you right now. Put them in aluminum foil, put them on top of somewhere, let the sun hit it, it's hot. You can do the same thing by leaving them in the car. Yep. In, in, on, in, the, in, on the in dashboard. Yep. On the, it, cooking food on the Not dashboard is a specialty. I needed, some, I needed some coffee to be hot again. You know what I did? Dashboard. Leave it on, it on the dashboard. dashboard. You know, I needed something yeah. to not be melted. Guess what I did? Left it on the dashboard. And that's ignorant. <laughs> that is ignorant right there. Like, it's ignorant enough that where people are going to look at you and go, that's stupid. But right. it was genius at the moment. At the moment. Right. Melting your cheese. Genius. Well... So I guess it was this one was ignorant. Can you spell this, that? This yes, spell I that can. That's it one of my favorite two words that I put together. So, but this this is had a really good ignorant conversation. Right thank here. you, this thank was, you. That's pretty good.
So I am the legendary Sonny G, Sonny with a O, not a U. I'm not a My Little Pony tattoo artist. And that sounds amazing, right? Uh, you probably make some good money off of that. Now that I think about it, I might want to study that. I might want to become a My Little Pony tattoo artist. Tattoo artist. But this is Professor Rod yeah. from <laughs> Talking Brick. Yeah. Talk T A L K N Brick. I'll get my apostrophe. Apostrophe <laughs> in. <laughs> Oh, brick. In, in, a, in, a in apostrophe. <laughs> Talking brick. Brick with an apostrophe. And you can find me on Trap Nerd Sunny, Trap Nerd ENT. Until then, y'all be cool like how y'all be cool. Have a good one. Isn't it really, Jay? This is the legendary Sunny G, and thank you for tuning in to Ever Podcast. You can also go ahead and follow us at Trap Nerd ENT on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can also go to our Patreon if you enjoy what we do and make a donation, patreon.com slash Trap Nerd ENT, and be on the lookout for future events. Sign up for our email list at Trap Nerd ENT at gmail.com. Again, thank you for listening. Y'all be cool like how y'all be cool.